What's going on? Welcome back to the channel. So I'm excited about this one here today, guys. This is going to be a start of a build series leading into summer here. I tend to get out and do a lot of speed running with my RCs and I'm often meeting up with the H&W Racing Channel, hooking up with those guys doing speed runs and a few other local guys here. And I thought, you know what? This is actually a thought I've had in my head since last summer. You know, might be a crazy idea, but we're going to get started on here today where I'm going to build an RC camera rig. I thought, you know, it'd be pretty cool to have a, an RC coming in behind the speed run car. Now I don't expect to be uh, keeping up with it, but just to get some of that ground level footage in motion. But it's not going to be that simple, guys. I'm not just going to mount a camera to the car. I wanted a camera that was functional. We were able to uh, turn the camera with the transmitter, maybe an FPV camera on that. There's some options here, and I haven't 100% figured it out, but we're going to get started on here today. So here's what we're going to be using, guys. This is the SNRC R2-G version 2. It's like a touring car. I picked this one up about three, four months ago on sale from AliExpress, and this is going to be the RC I use for it. Now, it is a roller. Let me show you what's all included here. Get everything out of there. It did come pre-assembled, and it's belt-driven. And that's what kind of... Uh, I wanted to do something different here. So we've got, we've got dual belts here. So I'm hoping that's going to be a smooth run. I've got to put a motor in it. Hopefully we'll get to that today. Maybe even the servo. And maybe get this thing fired up. And I did specifically buy this uh, roller for this project. So that's why I'm not really doing a review on the roller. Got some parts there. It came with everything. There's our gear right there. We'll be using that. Front bumper and body posts. Don't even have a body for it yet. Some paperwork. Some SNRC stickers. And a pretty cool manual. I actually looked at this already. Goes into great detail. A lot of exploded diagrams, parts lists. It's all in here, guys. So, the remainder of the gear here that I decided on at least starting this project with some new, some old. This is one of the new things I picked up Radiolink T8S. A little bit unorthodox for uh, RC cars. But I think this is going to work out great, and I'll show you why in a few minutes here. We also got an FPV uh, screen mount for that. What I got here? Got a 30 kg servo. Never opened that before. Bunch of servo parts. I've got another servo here, Race Star servo. I've had that mounted. That's a used one. I'm going to start uh, this project out going brushed. And the reason is I just don't have another brushless motor without taking one out of uh, one of my other RCs. So we're going to use this Tamiya Torque Tuned 540 uh, motor. I think that should be good enough, at least to get this project going. Then we might convert it over to brushless uh, at a later date. And then something else I had here. This is a Radiolink 9030 um, ESC. And actually, let's dig into that right now. Because the reason I was just going through... Uh, the parts I had, this has never been used. I've had it, I don't know how long I've had it. I actually didn't even remember buying it, but obviously I did. What, uh, actually I think the back here, what's nice about this, even though it's brushed, the input voltage for a lithium battery is saying 6 to 18 volts. So I planned on running this onto 3S and this will definitely handle it. So that is good. It does have an XT60 connector on there. I think I'll be soldering on maybe um, probably a Dean's connector onto that. I don't really have any XT60 uh, batteries, but I do have a lot of batteries with the Dean's connector on there, so I'll probably be doing that. All right, guys, so the transmitter here. It's a Radiolink T8S, and the reason I chose this one for this project was I want to be able to control the camera I have mounted to the RC, and this transmitter is going to allow me to do that. Let me show you why. If you're familiar with drones, a lot of camera drones have a scroll wheel like this on the top. And they use that scroll wheel to move the camera up and down. Well, I'm going to use this scroll wheel, which is channel 8 on the transmitter. I'm going to use that to turn my camera side to side. I'll probably have the camera, or I will have it mounted somehow to a servo, probably with a bit of an arm on it to allow that camera to uh, get some nice uh, you know, pan-style turns while we're uh, driving it there. And that's the reason why I've probably put an FPV camera right on top of the, the action camera I plan on mounting. 
so I can see where that camera is facing and we'll use the transmitter here to uh, to move the camera so that's the plan guys we're gonna hopefully make it work out the one thing with this transmitter is is we've got to get the spring in there on that uh, throttle stick there so they do have a little kit I didn't realize they had that so I bought another one so I have a spare but I got to open it up and get that little uh, spring and this little piece of plastic in there so it's self-centering I'm going to get set up here. We'll see what we uh, get started on here. I think we'll we'll figure out uh, this motor here and get it mounted. Shouldn't be a big deal. We're ready to get started on this. We've got the motor. We've got our gear here. Also have the motor mounting uh, machine screws there. Loctite. Now, here, let me give you a look here. Here's the motor mount right here. Now, we have clear access to the one mounting hole there but not the other. I think if we remove this battery hold down here we should be able to uh, get access to the other uh, hole for the motor mount. Well, we'll get that off there and see what uh, see what access we have there. I think it's going to work though. This will prevent us from having to uh, yeah it is take this top brace off here so you can see the the gear here has some nice holes through it which is a straight on shot to that motor mount so we should be good all right let's get uh well i guess let's get that gear mounted well set up at least I wonder what uh, tooth count, I don't even know what pitch this is. 23 tooth. No, it did not, oh yeah it did. I was going to say it didn't come with a grub screw, but I can see one in there. So a little grub screw. Not going to put any Loctite on it yet until we got the motor actually mounted. Alright, good enough for the moment. Okay, so let's get we got screws and some washers. Get a couple of screws out. Washers. There we go. Put the rest back in there. Okay. If you don't have one of these uh, magnetizers, I suggest they're cheap. Get one. Save you a lot of headaches. This might be difficult to do on camera, but I'll do my best here. We'll try to keep it in view. All right, let's see here. Got the one hole, that's the easy one. Okay, now I've got to do some, and make some room here. Let's see, got to, yeah, that should work. All right, I know it's not going to be uh, too visible for all of you guys, but it does look like it's going to work. So let's. about making it work here. Yeah, we got it. Okay, now I can set the mesh a little bit better. We're, we're way off.
still not that great. I'm going to have to space out that motor and space it off the mount a bit. So I need, here let me show you. I'm going to put that gear all the way back. Let's see if you can see there guys. be a better view right there you can see the gear is not uh, it's catching but it's not fully catching so I'm gonna have to space that motor back so that I can uh, get that gear to line up better okay, guys well first roadblock there just getting started on this project but that's what's gonna happen with these types of projects you're gonna run into some uh, problems that you're gonna have to sort out this one not a big deal it's just the painting gear was not aligning nicely with the spur gear here have to uh, space the motor back about an eighth of an inch. So I'm just going to use some nuts here, and we'll uh, we'll use those to uh, space back. Also use some longer uh, machine screws. So I'm just going to put a little dab of super glue there, and hopefully that'll hold the the nut in place. And then we'll uh, we'll get this motor mounted. Yeah, that should be pretty good. Get the other one here. Sounds like my dogs are getting into a fight with the neighbor's dogs right now. I'm just got to realign that one. But I think this uh, this should work. We shouldn't have an issue with this. There we go. It lined up pretty good. All right. I'll let that dry for a sec. You can see I just a couple nuts there glued on. That's what's going to create our space. I'm going to switch over. We're going to just use a little bit longer uh, screws. I pulled out some stainless screws that I had. Same size, just longer. And we'll just go with it, guys. I'm sure uh, we're going to get this one done with a few more problems along the way, but for me, that's part of the fun of it. It's doing something that uh, is a little unorthodox. It's going to be a fun project. And like I said, we're starting with uh, brush, but we'll, uh, there's a good chance we'll uh, switch over to brushless after we get this build complete and tested. All right, let's go round two and let's get that motor in. Need a bigger uh, Allen key. I might not have the right size here for this. Oh, there we go. I do. Hallucinating. All right. Just threading that in. Get this other one lined up. It's nice that this spur gear has these big holes in it. Makes it a lot easier than having to pull the whole thing apart. All right, we're not going to crank it tight, but I am going to show you we are lined up pretty good now on the top there. There you go. So
There we go. We got good mesh. So we'll piece of paper. Looks pretty good. Alright, we got the motor installed. It's meshing nicely here. Pinion and spur gear are lined up nicely now that we use these nuts right here to space them out. Eh, just over an eighth of an inch. So we're good there now. Let's get that ESC installed. Now, I don't know what this little bracket thing is here, but I want to put my ESC, I don't know, someone like that, I think. And that bracket's in the way. So we're just going to pop that bracket off. And I'm probably going to find out that I needed that bracket for something and we'll be uh, putting it back on and moving the ESC. But for right now, it's coming off. All right, let's put in a safe place and bring in the ESC here. So the ESC guys again is the Radiolink CL9030 brushed ESC. I'm not sure on uh, how many amps it is, but it will take up to 18 volts from a lithium battery. So I want to run this on 3S. This is perfect for that. So installing it, I guess I don't need the stand. We're going to use a little uh, double-sided sticky pad on the back here. And we're just going to put it in place right there is where we're going to put it. All right, there we go. We'll plug in the motor. All right, we'll clean up this wiring later once we get everything hooked up. We're gonna get up. this XT60 connector off here. I don't really use XT60s. I have a bunch of uh, batteries with Dean's connectors, so for this project, that'll work out good. These little jigs. Actually, it's a little weird because this one's not really, uh, it's a different type of uh, Dean's connector. It's not the same um, same size, but it'll, it'll actually work in the XT60 spot. So that's all right. Here we go. Now we can do it without having to uh, try to balance it. well I'm going to get it on camera here but probably won't be able to get it on camera at all I'm not going to move the camera we're just going to tack this in there we go tacked in see if the negative is long enough Yeah, we should be able to do it like this. There we go. Should be good there. Oh yeah, they're strong. Okay, get this sleeve over. Pop that into place. There we go. Pulled in the T8S, and the receiver that came with it is the R8EF version 1.5 8 channel receiver. We're going to be using a sticky pad to mount that as well. There we go, and I'm going to mount it right above the servo on the cross brace right here. We'll just stick it down. There we go. It doesn't have to be permanent yet. All right. Orientation of this signal positive negative. So signal on top. So it'll be white, red, then black at the bottom. And that'll go into channel two. All right. And actually, one thing I haven't done yet is there's these little jumper pins that need to go into the ESC. So I'm going to do that right now before we fire it up. Uh, 
yeah, little jumper pins there. I've got, and they got a little guide in here. So, normal mode, brake mode, racing mode, and climbing mode. I want to have brake mode, so looks like I need to have a jumper in space number one. So they got jumpers labeled one to four. So I'll get one in space number one, and that will with one in space one and nothing in space two will be brake mode according to the manual there now battery type we got a lithium battery going to use so in jumper spot three we need to insert another little jumper clip and that'll allow it to be programmed for a lithium battery there we go those two are ins and BEC output for 7.5 volts of output, we need insert, and for 5.5, we'll leave it at 5.5. We don't need to put any other ones in. So just in uh, one for brake mode and three to be able to use lithium uh, batteries. And we're gonna use a LiPo battery here. Okay, so I did pull in a battery. Um, unfortunately, I, I adjusted the, the battery uh, battery hold down here and now the the velcro is not long enough but we'll figure that out later not a big deal because it'll hold these nice uh larger style hard packs which i have both uh in 2s and 3s this is a 2s battery just to test this okay let's give it some juice here battery's plugged in now here's where it's important to keep all the wiring out we get it up on the stand Wiring's all out of the way. Receiver's plugged Let's in. Fire up the T8S. Now I believe channel two is here, so that'll be our throttle. It's already uh, got the spring in it, but like I mentioned, um, I'm going to have to throw a spring in on this side because we're going to have left-hand throttle. So we'll keep that down just in case. We're plugged in there. Let's power up the ESC. Green light. Yeah, green light flashing. All right, we should be good, and I believe throttle is going to be on this side. Let's make sure the wires are all out of the way. All right, we look good. Forward, backwards, and we don't have the steering servo yet. Well, guys, I'm going to pack it up now for the night. I think we got a good start to the project, though. We got the motor installed, meshing nicely, ESC and receiver are mounted, and they're hooked up and tested. So that is good. Um, other than that, guys, I think I'm just going to do a bit of cable management here tonight. And then I'll be heading upstairs for the evening. But, uh, yeah, I think when we uh, pick it up next time, we'll get the switch mounted. We'll get the servo mounted, the steering servo. And we're probably going to have to crack open the T8S here. Add that spring to the left uh, stick here to make it self-centering. And probably program it as well so it's all set up the way i want it to be set up but that is it for today guys i'm going to leave links down below in the description for everything that we're using in this project so if you want some more info or even grab some of these products for yourself links are down below in the description like this video guys give it a big thumbs up and we'll see you on the next one